Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my 2021 Roll Stars video. Uh, I did one of these last year. I think I may have done one of these in 2019. I don't remember though, but I did one last year. Um, and so this year we're going to kick it off um, this kind of post regular season content stuff with my Roll Stars video. Just like the Overwatch League assigns four Roll Stars every season, I will also be doing four Roll Stars. I don't get any type of vote in the actual league, so these are purely my opinions, and they will have nothing to do with the actual league vote, if that wasn't obvious. So, before I jump in, I just want to say a couple of things. The first thing is there are a lot of very good players in the league, and narrowing the list down to four is very difficult. So, for each category, I will be listing off uh, four honorable mentions uh, before I get into the actual list. And let me preface that by saying it's even... A difficult task to narrow it down to eight honorable mentions and sometimes I kind of will use the honorable mentions category to mention a player that I want to bring up um, because of something that they did during the season that I very much enjoyed but maybe they don't actually deserve to be a role star because they didn't quite hit that level um, there may be a player who I don't mention as an honorable mention um, who, who probably should be in that category and even is a potential favorite to win it but i like to kind of highlight players from different teams whenever i can and so i try not to double up on teams um you know for example fleta is not one of my damage roll stars and i don't have him on my honorable mentions list despite the fact that fleta is one of the best dps players in the league he had one of the best seasons of all the other ones he was the mvp last season he was a roll star last season so i like to try to give it to new players whenever possible so um he isn't on the list but i just want to kind of just give you an idea of the way things are going and of course as always, this is my opinion, um, so if you agree, you disagree, whatever it is, let me know in the comments down below. Let me you know your own Roll Stars, and yeah, so without further ado, let's get into this, and let's start off by talking about the DPS Roll Stars and my honorable mentions. Kicking it off with my honorable mentions for the DPS Roll Stars, I have Prophet, Happy, Kevster, and Flora. Prophet has had a great season this season. Soul Dynasty have been a, a very strong and solid team this season, but I just think the Prophet hasn't done quite enough and there hasn't been quite enough success for the Soul Dynasty throughout the season um, for me to think that he deserves a spot as the, you know, one of the best DPS players from this season, though I think he had a great season. For Happy, I thought he had a great start to the season, you know, in the main melee, uh, especially he's very, very good, but he wasn't able to really keep that same level of consistency throughout the season. Though we still had a fantastic season, and I want to give him a shout out. Kevster has been absolutely unreal, especially the second half of the season and this past weekend in the Countdown Cup. Um, if I could have had a fifth roll star, which I guess technically I could have, it is my rules. Um, I would have put Kevster in there, but there's just so many great DPS players this season that Kevster just barely missed the cut. And when it comes to Flora, I think Flora was the best part of the NYXL um, by a long mile. And I think that the reason why the NYXL were even competitive for a lot of this season was just because Flora was that good. And so I just want to give him a huge shout out for the success he was able to have on a team that didn't find a ton of success throughout the season. But let's jump in and let's talk about the actual four players that I have given the honor of Rollstar to this season. Let's start with one of a, uh, a player who had got it last season. And do I think we'll get it again this season? I have Sparkle. Now, a little spoiler, he is the only Dallas Fuel player I have on this list. Doha, another great season. Easily could be a role star and probably should be an honorable mention as well. But I think it goes without saying that Doha's had a great season. But let's talk about Sparkle. When you look at league-wide statistics, Sparkle is third in final blows per 10 minutes with 8.9, sixth in eliminations per 10 minutes, uh, with 19.6, fourth in hero damage per 10 minutes, with over 9,000 hero damage per 10 minutes, 9,742.9 to be exact, and he leads the league in final blows, hero damage, and solo kills, while being second overall in eliminations. Sparkle's had an incredible season, his Tracer has been better than what people expected it to be, his Farah, his Doomfist, his Genji have all been as good as we know them to be, and Sparkle really is, in my opinion, the backbone to the um, Dallas Fuel roster. If Sparkle's able to play well, the Dallas Fuel are an incredible team. And so for me, Sparkle has had a great season, 100% is 
a roll star for this season. Next, I have another returning face, someone who also won the roll star award last season. The only Shanghai Dragon that I am putting on this list, it is Lip. Lip, um, I thought Lip was good back in 2020. I didn't think he was um, Rookie of the Year level good. Lip is definitely one of the top candidates for MVP this season and is 100% one of the best DPS players in the league. When you look at where he ranks in the league, he is second overall in hero damage per 10 minutes with 9,804. He is sixth in final blows. He is sixth in the final blow to death ratio, seventh overall in eliminations, third in hero damage, third in solo kills. And when you look at those stats, you know, the thing with Lip is it's some teams you have players like Sparkle, where Sparkle just kind of carries and pops off and does so much. But Lip does as much work as he does with so much talent around him that are also getting a ton of hero damage and they're also getting final blows. Lip is still able to stand out in a team that is arguably the best in the league. That to me is a ton of really incredible... Um, that says a lot about Lip as a player, that he's able to stand out when the rest of his team is is doing equally as much work as Lip is. Lip is able to go that extra that extra mile just to get even more work done. And so for me, Lip is a no-brainer. Um, one of the MVP leading candidates, in my opinion, and definitely a damage roll star for 2021. Moving on to a new face on this list, I have Leave. Leave is one of the leading MVP candidates this season, and I think a lot of people may have him as the MVP, but we'll find out mine as we get into Friday when I have that video go up. But let's talk about Leave and his incredible resume for the 2021 season. He is first in final blows per 10 with 10.1 final blows per 10 this season, fourth in eliminations per 10, third overall in final blows, third overall with the final blows to death ratio, ninth overall in eliminations, seventh overall in hero damage, fifth overall in solo kills. But what I think are two of the most important stats to consider when you talk about leave this season he has the most final blows in a single map this season with 33 and he has three fled of deadlifts this season not one not two but three three times leave had 50 percent or more of a team's final blows in a map i think it is or a match i don't remember if it's a map or a match Leave had an incredible season. He was an amazing player this year. Definitely took a step up from what we saw from him last season. Definitely is a shoe in to be one of the role stars for the damage role for this season, and definitely one of the front runners for the MVP. My final damage role star for 2021 is Pelican. Now, Pelican's stats don't really jump out to you as much as some of these other players. He's third in hero damage per 10, which is pretty good. He's only 10th in the overall league final blows. He's eighth in hero damage overall. But one of the interesting statistics that really stands out to me, when you think of Pelican, I think a lot of people going into the season thought of his Genji, thought of his Farah. Pelican has the best win rate this season on Tracer, with a minimum of 15 team fights. Now, I want you to understand that the... Stats Lab defaults to 50, you know, a minimum of 50 team fights. But I wanted to see how how low do you have to get in this team fights thing to show just how good Pelican was on Tracer this season. And you have to go down to 15 because I think his EQO has, you know, a higher win rate, but has only played 14 team fights with Tracer. Pelican is just a carry player on the Tracer in a way that we have not really seen. When he plays Tracer, he is a, a just a mega carry. He is the leading Rookie of the Year candidate, and he is certainly, in my opinion, a shoe-in for the DPS role star. You can't look at just stats, and you can't look at just paper, you know, oh, he's not doing that well in some of these other categories. What Pelican provides to his team doesn't show up just on paper. You can see it when you're watching. And that, to me, is the big thing that stands out with Pelican. And that is why he is my fourth damage roll star. So here are my damage roll stars for 2021. Sparkle, Lip, 
Leave, and Pelican. Next, let's move on to the support roll stars and my honorable mentions. So for my honorable mentions for supports, I have Skewed, Jexa, Iris, and Monk. Skewed is far and away the best Brigitte we saw this past season. And we also got to see some Zenyatta play from him every so often. Part of the reason why I didn't want to make him a role star is just because we really only saw him play one hero at a really, really high level. We saw some Zenyatta every so often, but his, his Brigitte was really what he was being used for this season. It was very, very good. Best we've seen. Um, but it just didn't seem like the thing that was good enough for me to say that he should be a role star among some of the other top candidates. When it comes to Jex, I think he was one of the top main supports this season. Um, this season was really dominated by flex supports. Main supports kind of took a step back this season. On the last season, where I thought we had really good main support play from players like um, Funny Astro and FD God. Um, it was a much bigger main support season last season. Um, this is not so much, but I think Jex was one of the top main supports this season, so wanted to give him a shout out. Iris, for me, just barely made the list. Um, I wanted to make sure I had one main support on the actual list, and so I had to pick between um, who I had before and who I would kind of take out, and Iris was just kind of the victim of that, so I think he's a great player. I think he is 100% top four flex support from this season, but just wasn't quite um, enough when it comes to the fact that I just wanted to make sure I had one main support on the list at least, um, so he kind of got the boot from that. And then finally, Monk, who I think had a fantastic season. Monk, in my opinion, was one of the best players on Chengdu this season. I think when it comes to best rookie on Chengdu this season, Monk has my vote because I thought Monk was incredible this season. But with those four out of the way, let's move on to my actual list for my roll stars for the supports. And let's start off with Izayaki. One of the MVP candidates for this season, and he is 100% deserving of that. He is third among all supports in final blows per 10. He is third among supports in eliminations per 10. Um, sixth in hero damage per 10 among supports. Has the most final blows of all supports this season. Uh, the fifth highest final blow to death ratio of supports. Third uh, uh, highest eliminations among supports. Leads all supports in hero damage and solo kills and is third overall in healing. So Izayaki is going to get you really strong offensive play, right? Really high in a lot of those offensive stats. You know, the final blows per 10, eliminations per 10, overall final blows, eliminations, hero damage, solo kills. But he's also still getting a lot of healing. He is third in the league when it comes to healing. And while some of that could be due to the fact that the Shanghai Dragons played a lot of matches um, when some teams didn't play as many, it is still a very, very impressive um, statistic from Izayaki nonetheless. He is not somebody who's fragging for you, but not healing your team. No, he is getting you both. He is getting you support in the offensive and defensive categories. That is a huge thing for any uh, support player, and especially the flex supports, and Izayaki is probably one of, if not the best uh, flex supports that we saw for the 2021 season. But there were some other really good flex supports. So let's go to the next one. We have Fielder. He led all supports in eliminations per 10. He also had the highest healing per 10 in the league, as well as the highest amount of healing overall in the league by a pretty decent margin. I believe it was almost a thousand more healing than the next best. He was third in final blows among all supports, led all supports in eliminations, second most hero damage among supports, and ninth in solo kills among all supports. So, a little bit different from Izayaki, um, in the sense that he was really good in all of the offense, or all of the defensive categories in terms of his healing per 10 and healing overall. He led the league in both of those statistics, while also still being top in eliminations per 10 and top in eliminations overall, second in hero damage, third in final blows, and even a top 10 support in solo kills. So, Definitely, when you want to look at healing output, Fielder was the best in the league, but he was also able to get a lot of offensive um, play in there, 
a lot of that, I think, comes down to his incredible Moira play that we saw in the June Joust, which was a very good hero being able to output incredible defensive, you know, healing, while also being able to pound in a ton of damage on the opponent. So, Fielder had a great season. I thought he had a great season last season when he was playing on really high ping. Um, but this season, now he gets to play with his teammates. He's local, and he was just amazing this season. So, definitely a deserving role star for Fielder among the best in the league. Next is Shu, another MVP candidate, and in my opinion, one of the best flex supports that the Overwatch League has ever seen in terms of a consistent level. He has been good since his debut in 2019, and he has not let up. Led the supports in final blows per 10 and in hero damage per 10. Um, he was second in eliminations per 10 among all supports. Eighth in healing per 10. Um, second in final blows among all supports. He had the best final blow to death ratio of all supports. And he was sixth in eliminations and hero damage among all supports. And eighth in healing. So Shu, very good offensively. Still top 10 in healing stats, but not as strong as some of your other um, flex supports like Fielder and Izayaki. But Shu was also a clutch player, and that is a big part of why I have Shu here at this spot on the list. If you look at the Countdown Cup and the grand finals of that tournament, wow, wow, wow. Uh, he was able to do everything that he had to do. He came up huge in that win over the Chengdu Hunters, and he has done that time and time again this season. Shu is an incredible player. He always comes up big in huge moments. I remember a game, I believe it was when they played against the Washington Justice um, or the Paris Eternal uh, on Hollywood. Um, they were on point A defense. They were about to lose. Shu comes into that side room and just starts clicking heads, getting some kills. He's been doing that all season. He has been coming up big in big moments for this Gladiators team all season. Definitely, hands down, one of my favorite players to watch in the league and definitely deserving of a role star spot this season. My final support role star is the only main support I have on this list. Like I said, I wanted to have at least one main support on this list. And to me, there was one main support that stood out among all of the rest. It was Lee Jae Gon. Of course it was Lee Jae Gon. I mean, come on, Lee Jae Gon Tower, he set the record for most final blows in a match this season. And he did it on one map. I, <laughs> like, that, that doesn't happen. He had fourth most final blows of all supports, fifth most eliminations of all supports, he was fourth in healing among all supports, and the second most environmental kills in the entire league. Lee Jae Gon had a great season. When Izayaki took a step up this season, it meant Lee Jae Gon didn't have to be the same high potential kind of carry level player that he was back in 2020. Yet he still was in a lot of cases, and I think he had a bit of a quieter season this season. He wasn't as flashy as what we saw from him last season. He was always going for the big plays, the big moments. You know, there was that time last season when he was playing BAP and set up the window on Eichenwald uh, going into, you know, right before point B. And it was just like, that's such a Lee Jae Gon thing to do, but he doesn't do that as much anymore. Um, and he, we've seen Lee Jae Gon kind of grow and evolve into a much stronger, better, kind of more well-rounded player. And I think that Lee Jae Gon has definitely, uh, in my opinion, locked up his title as the best main support in the Overwatch League. And for that reason, I have him here as my final support role star. So, to recap, my role stars for the support role are Izayaki, Fielder, Shu, and Lee J. Gon. Finally, let's take a look at my tank role stars for this season. This was, for me, the hardest one to pick because I think that the tanks are always in a really weird spot. Tanks seem to always be dominated by one or two teams um, when it comes to the role stars. And I find that really difficult, and it, it's something that happens very often in only the tank role, um, where it's find kind of hard to pick them out. But I think this season, there are a couple of names that really stood out to me that helped kind of break that. But let's first start off with my honorable mentions. So for my honorable mentions for the tank role, I have Fate, Piggy, Hawk, and Gaga. I had Fate actually as one of my role stars, um, but I changed them out for another player because I think that other player deserves a ton of credit. 
But I thought Fate this season was very, very good. I actually think that he was a huge part of Shanghai's success. I think he is a sleeper MVP candidate. I think he should have been nominated for MVP. I think that Fate was a big part of why the Shanghai Dragons won the Jun Joust. His Wrecking Ball play won them that tournament. He was the he alone basically forced the Dallas Fuel to switch off of their comfort picks. And that, to me, is a huge part of why Fate had a great season. Second is Piggy. Piggy was one of the leading Rookie of the Year candidates all season. His uh, Sigma play especially was very, very good. Even his, his Diva and Zarya looked strong as well, but I just don't think he was quite strong enough to be considered the top of the top. I think he was very, very good. Um, he was one of the best in the league, but I just don't quite think he was among the best in the league when it came to the tank players. Hawk really impressed me this season. I thought Hawk had a great season. Um, he and Gator both, in my opinion, took huge steps forward, but it was Hawk, in my opinion, that really, really, really leveled up and was just an elite level off tank this season. Um, I did not expect that much from him, and he impressed me a ton, and I have to give a ton of credit to Hawk for what he was able to do for the Atlanta Reign, becoming one of the best teams in the league. And finally, I have Gaga. I mean, Gaga definitely had some big shoes to fill with Among being such a popular player, but Gaga came in, filled those shoes very well, and was one of the best main tanks in the league. His Wrecking Ball play was very, very strong. His Arisa play was very, very strong. Main reason why I don't have him in the top four is because I just think Chengdu kind of hurt his campaign um, quite a bit. They subbed him out a lot. Um, maybe when they shouldn't have, and some of that kind of helps support Gaga's value, um, but I also think that there were times when Gaga was not the star of the show for this team. I really think when you look at the Chengdu Hunters, you look at players like Monk and Leave, who I think really stepped up big time. Gaga just kind of had to do his job. He did it well, but I never really felt like Gaga was the star, and that is part of the reason why he did not make my top four. But let's jump into the actual four role stars that I have picked out. I don't think there's going to be many surprises here. Let's start off with the first one. I have Fearless. He is top 10 in pretty much all of the categories that you really want out of a tank. Um, you know, he is ninth in final blows per 10 of all tanks. That's usually a, a stat dominated by off tanks. Fate, or sorry, Fearless was hands down the best main tank this season, in my opinion. He was fourth in eliminations per 10 among tanks. Second in hero damage per 10 among tanks. Hero damage for 10 among tanks. I can't talk. Too many words that are too similar there. Um, which, once again, another stat mostly dominated by off tanks. So that just shows you how offensively Fearless was able to play and how he was able to make so much space. He was 7th overall in the league in final blows, which was the 2nd among all tanks. Um, he was 3rd in eliminations overall, 2nd among tanks. 4th in hero damage overall, the best among all tanks. And 3rd in environmental kills in the league which was the best among all tanks. So if you had a great season, his Winston especially was very, very strong. His Reinhardt was very strong. He definitely struggled at times when it came to the Wrecking Ball compositions and the Arisa compositions, but he was so strong on the Winston and the Reinhardt. He was the best main tank this season. I think his value as a main tank was higher than any other main tank this season. And so for me, definitely has to be one of the role stars for this season. Next, I have Void, Fearless's old tank partner from the Shanghai Dragons. Overall, um, very, very good season from Void. Sixth eliminations per 10 uh, overall for the tanks, and the 10th best tank in terms of hero damage per 10. So he wasn't the most offensive of tanks this season, and that shows you, you know, he was only ninth in final blows overall, but that was the third among all tanks. Fifth in eliminations overall, which is a very strong showing for him. Once again, third among all tanks. And 10th overall in hero damage, which was the fourth among tanks. But the big Void stat that will always stand out to me, and that has always been one of the reasons why I think Void is such a strong player, and why I think he is a role star, is that Void had the lowest deaths per 10 in the entire league. Not just among tanks, the entire league, with 3.6 deaths per 10. That is the lowest in the league, lower than the likes of Animo, lower than the likes of... Some of your other really great players that you think of, like, this is a player who did not die, like, ever. He doesn't die, he stays alive, which is arguably the most important thing you need out of a player. Are you going to be around when we need you around? Are you going to be dead when we need you to be around? The answer with Void is, no, I'm going to be around. I don't die. Um, 
and it's something that nobody in the league does as well as Void. So for me, that stat alone is an incredible one. Um, and he's done that now two seasons in a row. That shows you consistency from Void. That is why, in my opinion, Void is a shoe-in for a Roll Star award. Next is Fearless's current off-tank partner. It's Hanbin. Hanbin has had an incredible season, and I think a lot of people have kind of slept on Hanbin this season because Fearless is always super flashy and Sparkle's always super flashy. Hanbin has had a very good season. He is first in final blows per 10 among all tanks, second in eliminations per 10 among all tanks, third in hero damage per 10 among all tanks. He has the sixth fewest deaths per 10 minutes among all tanks, which is pretty notable because last season he was worse in that category. He showed him pretty significant improvement um, in that department. When you look at the overall league, he has the most final blows among all tanks, uh, fourth overall in the league. He has the best final blow to death ratio of all tanks, which is the 10th best in the league. He has the most eliminations in the entire league, which of course is the best among all tank players. And in terms of the hero damage, he is second among all tanks with the fifth most hero damage in the league, I believe behind only Fearless. So pretty good um, season from Hanbin. Very, very good showing from him. Led most of the categories when it comes to tank players, and in some cases, even the league. So, very great season from him. Doesn't have the same flash that a player like Fearless does, but still consistent and comes up big when you need him. My final tank, Roll Star, is a player who really left a mark on me over the past couple of weekends um, watching him play. I think he is a, a star, and I think he is somebody who we just really are, are seeing perform at that high level late in the season that he needed to give his team a push and that for me is space space has had a very good season i, I want to be very clear space has the most eliminations per 10 among tanks he has the second most final blows per 10 among all tanks he's seventh in final blows among tanks has the third best final blow to death ratio among all tanks and is sixth in eliminations among all tanks and those are including you know, your tournament games. This is a team that only made one tournament. When you have when you have teams like Atlanta and Dallas and Chengdu um, and Shanghai that have made four or three tournaments and the, the LA Gladiators only made one, that's a very impressive uh, statistic to look at. And so Space, to me, has been one of the most consistent players. And when you narrow his stats down to just the per 10 stats, he is a top-level player tank in a lot of them now his offensive statistics are definitely very shines his final blows and eliminations per 10 but even still he has good showings in his final blows and his final blow to death ratio space to me is very very good and his impact is also very um heavy as a leader as somebody who kind of brings his team together we've heard a lot about how space would kind of tell his teams to kind of look and say hey like i make mistakes i made really bad mistakes if i can do that and i have my head in the game you can too it's not just the stats that I think have elevated Space's play this season. He's become a leader for a team that needed a leader, and he is becoming such an important piece of that LA Gladiators team. As they go into playoffs, I look at Space to be the key to this team. And so for me, hands down, Space is a roll star for this season. So to recap my tank roll stars, it is Fearless, Void, Hanbin, and Space, and that are that are that is the end of my list so that concludes my list of my roll stars for the 2021 season here's a little picture with all of them on there so you can see who i picked and why um and, and you know there it is but let me know your own list in the comments down below i'd love to hear from you but that is all for me today hope you all enjoyed the video if you did consider liking and subscribing for more like it in the future but that is all from me. Thank you once again. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And until next time, bye-bye.